Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be going through and learning about the Keepers in Iron, a group of devout knights going through the clearings forests and actually searching for relics and their prized trophies. And one of the things that I think is really interesting about this faction is that they're one of the most complex factions in the game up there with the Lizard Cult in terms of complexity. Now, because of this, I have found that a lot of different groups have a lot of different opinions about this faction, especially from the groups that play this game a bit more casually. I have actually heard uh, so many different varying opinions on whether this faction is either super, super powerful or very, very underpowered. And I've kind of seen both of those on the table. Now, I know that this faction can be a little bit difficult to grok, but today I am going to be giving you 10 strategy tips in order to help you get started playing the Keepers in Iron better for your next couple games. And hopefully, by the end of it, you will be able to maintain those relics, keep a sturdy and strong retinue, and be able to take those 30 victory points faster than any other faction in route. Now, when you're starting off the game, you need to keep three goals in mind, and these three goals are the things that you need to do. These are your highest priority things at the beginning of the game for you as the Keepers in Iron. The first thing that you need to do is you need to add up to two or three cards to your retinue. This is really important for getting a lot of extra actions in your retinue, because remember, the more cards you put in there, the more things you can actually do. Now, if you have wild cards, these are definitely gonna be your highest priority, and you're gonna wanna get at least one extra one in your move column. That way you have two wild moves. Move doesn't really have any fear of losing a card in that section of the retinue. So putting a wild in there straight off the bat is a great idea in order to just have a lot of good early movement opportunities. Now, the second goal in the early game that you need to do is to not take any unnecessary risks. Do not lose any cards from your retinue with recovering or delving. This is very important because like I said, we need to keep that retinue up and healthy with a lot of cards in it at the beginning of the game to ensure that we have a lot of actions to play with. And the third thing that you need to do is the easiest because it is one that you really can't get wrong. And it is one of the strongest openings that you can do as the keepers in iron, and that is to encamp twice the first turn of your game. This will allow you to draw three cards at the end of your first turn, which will give you a nice boost and help you accomplish the other two goals really easily with a nice hand of good cards. Now, as the Keepers in Iron, the retinue is really, really important, like I was saying, but what exactly does a good retinue look like? Your main retinue is trying to get three cards in move, four cards in battle, and three cards in recover, and then maybe towards the late game transition towards two move, four battle, and four recover. Now, whenever you know that you're going to be discarding cards from your retinue due to a uncalculated delve or one that might be a little bit more risky, always try to use your suited cards for those actions in order to keep the wild cards in your retinue as long as possible. I know that bird cards are really important for all the factions in Root. Well, not all of them, but most of them. But with the Keepers and Iron, the bird cards are the most important, most valuable resource ever in the game. And when you get a wild card, you need to be keeping on to that and putting it in your retinue as soon as possible. Now the Keepers in Iron are really just bursting badgers. I mean, they score like crazy. You can go from two points to eight points or from 18 points to 22 points in no time. And when you do, that puts a huge target on your back as the Keepers in Iron. Now, I'll be honest, there are cases in which this is a good strategy to just race up the track. If you realize that other players are not experienced enough to stop you and you are on a roll with your point scoring, you will probably be able to just race your points up the score track and win the game. But with a table of experienced players that know how to stop you, how to hurt you, how to force you to really play at your weakest, you got to be careful about scoring too much 
too early. And oftentimes keeping yourself away from first place at the beginning of the game a little bit is going to benefit you greatly towards the mid game. This is one thing that we have seen pay off in tournament games that we've seen pay off in just my personal games as well, that the Badgers that didn't just jump up front and start going crazy with their scoring, even though they had the ability to, uh, they didn't because they knew that they would be stopped by the table very early and it hurts a bit more earlier on. And guys, we actually have a channel sponsor. It is Leader Games, the creator of Root. And so if you haven't picked up that hoodie that you were looking for, or maybe you're missing the Marauders expansion, you can't actually play the Keepers yet, definitely check the link below. There is a ton of awesome products on there. There are other games like Oath or Fort or Ahoy. All of them are awesome games with an amazing team behind them. And if you buy anything by using my link down below, you're going to be directly supporting the channel here and the work that I am doing. Thank you so much to Leader Games for sponsoring today's video. Now we have no idea what happens to those extra badgers. Do the badgers eat each other? Uh, oh, I don't even want to think about it. But one thing that you don't want to happen is you do not want to have to start automatically losing your badgers with live off the land. It is just a waste of your precious warriors and badgers. And so in order to prevent that, whenever you are moving, always be thinking about leaving just one warrior in the clearings as you go. This will actually give you amazing options later in the game in order to get way stations and places that you need. And remember that this can be done with the move section of your retinue and also the recover section of your retinue because both have a move in there. You can take advantage of this and ensure that you do not have to live off the land at the end of your turn. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the relics is that you were always going to have, at the beginning of the game at least, a 50% chance to draw a three value relic, 25% chance for a two value and 25 chance for a one value of each type of suit. And so that's something to keep in mind whenever you're approaching, delving into those clearings, that you have those chances at the beginning of the game. And with that information, you can use that in any way that you would like to. Now, it might not become super helpful, but it is a nice thing to keep in mind, just something to look out for that. It's pretty likely that you're gonna get those threes at the beginning, and then depending on what you get at the beginning, you can kind of start deducing what you might see in your next couple delves. Let's say you're about to discard one of your bird cards out of your retinue with one of your wild actions. If you have multiple, definitely try to use the faithful retainer first, because if you lose the faithful retainer, it's not going to be as bad as if you lose just a regular wild card. If you lose a regular wild card, that's going to go into the deck circulation again. However, if you use one of your faithful retainers, those will be just discarded out of the game and doesn't give your opponents an opportunity to use a wild card that you would have discarded. So the priority is always discarding your faithful retainers over your other wild cards first. Do the more risky plays with those cards as opposed to the other ones. Do not make one clearing a gold mine for your opponents. Try not to have multiple relics sitting around in one clearing at a time. In fact, one of your goals is to try and get those relics from the forest and then get them recovered as quickly as possible. You don't want to leave them laying around at all, but especially don't keep two in one clearing at a time for longer than one turn. Not even one turn. Don't don't let it happen. Keep them separate. Keep one relic at a clearing at a time. You don't want to give your opponents that many points and it will just become a gold mine that every single faction will want to come hunt down and take those precious victory points. And it doesn't double up your devout knight's ability, giving you that extra armor. You only need one relic in the clearing in order to take advantage of that ability. And while speaking of that ability, when you get those lower relic counts, these are actually really good options like the ones and the twos, specifically the ones though, those are the best. These are good options to kind of keep around on the board a little longer in order to take advantage of your devout knight's ability. 
Devout Knights is really, really good in defense, but it is even better in offense. Thinking about it, even if you get ambushed, you're only gonna be losing one warrior, which is insane. But even then, you really have a small percentage of losing any of your warriors as long as you have that Devout Knight's armor going on. It is gonna be extremely important for you to find easy spots to recover your relics. These will often look like clusters of the same suit adjacent or close to one another. Let's just say that you're trying to recover some idols this turn and your idol way station is in a rabbit clearing. Well, spend those early moves to set up rule in other rabbit clearings before you get to that step of your retinue and recover those idols. This is kind of one of the more important things because it is a lot less risky to recover than to delve. When you're delving, always assume to be losing that card because you don't really know what you're gonna be flipping up all the time until you've recovered enough to where you can properly calculate what you're gonna be running into. But with the recovering, you wanna make sure that you can recover as many of those relics at the same time as possible, meaning that you wanna have three of the same clearing of a waste station ruled by your keepers in iron. Now, when you're thinking about crafting as the Keepers in Iron, you gotta keep in mind that card draw is kind of your most important aspect of your faction, because the more cards you have, the more options and flexibility you have with things like recruiting, because you have to spend cards to recruit, and things like risking losing cards when you're delving or recovering, then you can have some cards to replace those for your next turn. It is essential that you have a good, nice flow of new and fresh cards throughout your gameplay. So, some of the cards to look out for in the Exiles and Partisans deck for extra card draw are going to be Charm Offensive, Marine Broker, and Swap Meet. These three cards are going to be absolutely excellent. Now, if you're rocking the standard deck, keep an eye out for Better Burrow Bank. That's going to help you get some more cards as well. Ones that I believe can always be good pretty much with every faction, but just ones that you might want to think a little extra about when playing the good old Keepers in Iron. I would say keep an eye out for False Orders or maybe Corvid Planners, as well as the Eerie Emigree. These are cards that can give you some really nice options throughout your gameplay. And like I said, if you're still rocking with that standard deck, some options to look out for could be Scouting Party, Tax Collector, and Armorers. Now the best place to be at as the Badgers is to really not care whether you're gonna be discarding cards or not. And this will actually be achievable once you've gotten a lot of way stations on the board, once you have a nice retinue built up, and once you have some cards crafted that will allow you to draw some extra cards on your turn. Surrounding forests with Keeper's Warriors is a huge ask and often players will just focus so hard on surrounding a forest before delving that they are just wasting time and being too picky. The more important thing is that you are recovering the relics for points. So just take all of the relics from those clearings using battle and delve actions. It doesn't matter if you're discarding those cards as long as you have more cards to replace those at the end of your turn for your next turn. Super, super important. You don't have to worry about it. Just get all the relics and then use the moves in the next column to take those relics and then recover all of them with your best suited way stations. Now, you may have to listen to that a few times in order to get it. I'm hoping that some of these visuals will help you understand what I mean by that. But just as kind of a clearer way of saying the same thing, don't worry about surrounding a forest before delving. Just delve, delve, discard those cards if you have to. You can replace them. What you should be worrying about is making sure that you rule multiple colors of the suits of your way stations. In order to recover all of those relics, or as much as you can, in a single turn. Now, sometimes you don't wanna be the target at the table and you can't actually win the game by just collecting relics and it's very unlikely that you're gonna get 27 points from all of the relics that you can possibly get. And so with that being said, on top of the fact that you can craft cards for some points, another way is policing the table, making sure that you are becoming that big, board bully that you were always meant to, taking away buildings and getting those extra victory points from the cardboard on the table. Now you might consider asking the table, hey, who needs checked right now? Because I have the power to check that person and 
In turn, you're getting points, but you're also earning favors around the table. Because let's face it, people in Root don't like to do the dirty work. Everybody likes to talk about the fact that somebody should be checked, somebody should be attacked right now. And if you're the one who goes out and does it, especially in the earlier turns, you're gonna earn some favors around the table. If you are going to be doing this, put your focus on recruiting that turn with some of your cards, getting a ton of badgers in one clearing where hopefully you already have a relic present. Then you can just move them, banish your opponents to the shadow realm, and be on your way with that devout knight's ability protecting you the whole time. And while you have the relic there, you could, let's just say, get it recovered as well with the move and recover actions at the end of your step as a little reward for your hard work, especially if the table is really thankful that you went ahead and took out a entire WA base with a ton of battle actions. If you were able to achieve all of this and do all of these things, you are going to find success as the keeper in iron. And trust me, you will play a better game as them. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if it brought value to you, please leave a like as well as comment down below. Maybe if you have an extra tip to add on with this faction, a lot of people struggle with it. Go ahead and leave your best strategy tips. But that is it for the Keepers and Iron Strategy Guide. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.